Thank you very much. So that's better. Huh? Um, so in the middle, we have uh, European Commissioner Carlos Moedas, who you all know very well, and uh, next to him the um, Minister of uh, Economy, Pedro Cesar Vieira. Um, on the far side uh, from me is uh, Faber Capital's managing partner, Alexander Barbosa. Um, and then uh, next to the commissioner, uh, we have the CEO of IFD, Enrique Kuth. And uh, last but not least, our um, head of Lisbon office of the European Investment Bank, Kim Kralgaard. And I will ask him to start, please. So without further ado, uh, it is a real, real pleasure to be here um, and to be signing this transaction, which is a new investment uh, of the Portugal Tech in a fund in Portugal, the Faber Ventures. Um, and we're signing this among friends, in fact, who are here at the table. We are jointly in this venture, and I'll explain a bit more about that. Um, we have, we're pleased to sign this for three very good reasons. First of all, this is a prime invest, uh, in example of an investment under the European Fund for Strategic Investments, so the so-called Juncker Plan. This is a prime example because it's, first of all, a very good investment. Uh, we believe very much in the Portuguese ITC, ICT sector. This is a fund which is data-centric, early, mid-stage, um, and which we think can capture a lot of the very good examples of investments that we see in Portugal. Secondly, it's an excellent example because it is Portugal Tech, an initiative that we founded jointly with IFD one year ago here at the Web Summit, announced by Antonio Costa, the Prime Minister in order to um, support better, even better, the Portuguese venture capital ecosystem. And thus, um, this is an example of exactly what Portugal Tech can do in helping uh, new funds take off. Um, and s thirdly, of course, it is complementing the Portuguese venture capital ecosystem. Now, the European Investment Fund is carefully investing throughout the European Union in order to help ecosystems grow and establish themselves. Um, and this is very much complementary to the other venture capital funds that we have been backing here in Portugal. In fact, we have, with this fund, now signed five new funds in Portugal. Um, so in other words, we've signed Amilar, Indico, Valis, Faber, and Maize Mustard Seed, which is more geared towards uh, social innovation. Uh, let me just wrap up, therefore, by saying how the European Investment Fund operates, and just to say a few words about, in fact, how um, important the European Investment Fund is um, in supporting ecosystems and venture capital, and thus thereby innovation in Europe. About one third of all venture capital funds in Europe are backed by the European Investment Fund. About half of all unicorns that have come out of Europe in the last years have actually been funded by the European Investment Fund through the funds. And the European Investment Bank is also with about 600 million euro of venture debt complementing the venture capital system um, with further investment into innovation. So in other words, the EIB and the European Investment Fund are backing innovation in the European Union through various initiatives and this one which we're signing today is exactly one of those. In Portugal, we have um, two major initiatives that we have been implementing together with the Portuguese stakeholders. One is the Portugal Venture Capital Initiative, which is now 10 years old and was a big success. The second major one is indeed Portugal Tech, which we are very, very happy to be partnering with IFD in. So that's what I would like to contribute now, and I'm looking forward to this success of this venture. The success of the venture will certainly also be our success. Thank you very much. So with this, I would like to hand over to the Commissioner. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, very happy to be here for the second time in a row. And um, the reason that I'm really happy to be here is that if we are here today, it's uh, basically due to the vision of a man. I mean, Jean-Claude Juncker, when we started in 2014, identified one of the biggest gaps ever in uh, investment in Europe. And he said that we had to actually close that gap, that uh, as you know, after the crisis, the investment in European countries went down by almost 20%. 
And so we launched this idea of the Juncker plan, 440, 45 billion already invested. And on that plan, one of the points for Jean-Claude Juncker that was extremely important was to help the small and medium enterprises. And when I look at the fact that we have helped so far more than one million, I'm very proud of that. More, I'm very proud that my country, or as we say in the European Union, the country I know best, is on the top five uh, of the countries that have uh, really enjoyed uh, being part of the fund. So on the top five countries, you have Portugal, and the minister, I'm sure, will say something about it, with more than 2.6 billion of investment of the Juncker plan. But the second point was about uh, my own vision about the problem that we had in Europe in the ecosystem. The European ecosystem for innovation had one major piece of the puzzle that was not working, and that was venture capital. If you would look at the US and you'd see that the US raises almost 40 billion euros in venture capital. And at Europe in 2014, at the time, the US was around 35 billion, and the Europe was just 5 billion. Today, we are around 9 billion. But basically, there was a gap in between Europe and the US of 5 billion. And that's when we decided to launch what we call the Venture EU. And the idea was to have a fund of funds that the EIF and the EIB helped us so much to get through, where we would have more private money. We need more private money. And so for each euro of public money, we would have three euros of private money. And that amount of a fund of funds that we call Venture EU is also part of the story that we are here today. And finally, a word to the, the Portuguese ecosystem and to Faber, the company that we have here. I think that I have a, an advice for uh, Faber, which is that um, keep really looking at investing as uh, you are uh, very good investors. But look at two things. Look at disruptive innovation, new technologies that will create new jobs, not just incremental innovation. And second, also look outside of Lisbon. Look outside of the big cities and the Minister for Terrestrial Cohesion is with us, Ana Brunhosa. And I think that uh, you will have a lot of opportunities in the diversity of the whole country to invest in uh, new ideas that can really create more jobs for the country. And so you have that duty, that responsibility, because never forget that the money that we're putting through, the Portuguese government and the European Union, you have a responsibility, you have a social responsibility on your shoulders. Uh, so Alexander, Carlos, and everybody from the company, please uh, keep that in mind because we will uh, be watching you in the good sense of the word. Thank you very much. And with that, I would like to hand over to the minister. Thank you. Good afternoon to you all. Just a couple of words to explain why the signature of this uh, funding uh, is uh, significant in the context of the strategy for entrepreneurship and innovation in Portugal. We set out this uh, strategy in 2016. The aim was to develop the ecosystem, was to uh, foster the internationalization of startups from Portugal, and also to provide access to finance. The ecosystem has been buoyant. In truth, we have put together the network of incubators. They're now working together, and 3,000 startups are being incubated right now. And the companies which started in the network, which are still working and uh, as a going concern, have created 25,000 jobs. They now represent more than 1% of GDP in Portugal, and the growth of their um, turnover is about 30% a year. The, the aggregate uh, growth of turnover is about 30% a year. So it, it really pays to uh, develop this ecosystem. It really pays to support companies which can grow very fast, which have ideas, and take those ideas to the market. We have supported the internationalization of startups. The presence of uh, many startups from Portugal in this web summit is an example of that. But the third and more critical topic was about financing. Financing is an issue in Europe. Access to finance, particularly equity finance in the very early stages and then the growth stages of companies, is something which puts Europe at uh, 
uh, below par to their American competitors. And it's the development of the, a venture capital system which has preoccupied so much the European authorities and national authorities across the, the continent. And in fact, the uh, Juncker plan was instrumental to try to address this issue. And we have uh, understood at uh, a very early stage that we should work together with European authorities to leverage the very uh, small availability of public money in this country. So we're very happy with the partnering that we have done in, uh, uh, with EIF. Uh, I think that one of the issues which I'm more happy is that we have put up uh, IFD uh, working to make money available to uh, the economy and to SMEs across the country. I think it is one of the reasons why we are one of the main beneficiaries of the Juncker plan so far. But the, the idea of working together with the EIF, which has uh, already allowed for uh, investment to be deployed uh, into uh, general partners, venture capitalists, uh, in uh, which can leverage more than 200 million in Portuguese startups is so far has, has been so fine that we are trying to do another uh, program going forward for later stages and, and growth stages. So I think this is very important. Uh, access to capital continues to be an issue in Portugal and in Europe. Uh, just uh, to uh, uh, to wrap up this. The uh, European Commission uh, just uh, presented the EU Innovation Scoreboard recently. And we have seen that Portugal has made a very significant progress these last few years in the Innovation Scoreboard. Three Portuguese regions are now con considered strong innovators. And it's remarkable that we have two new regions in the country which are now innovators. The northern region of Portugal, the central region of Portugal, so outside the big centers uh, do really have strong innovation indexes. Uh, SMEs in these regions are one of the most, uh, are some of the most innovative in Europe. And the issue which is identified, which is uh, preventing us from going further, is access to capital. We will continue to work on access to capital because we do believe that this is very important for the growth of productivity and the growth of business in the next few years. And I am extremely thankful to the European Union and to the EIF for the support they have been giving to the efforts we have been making. Thank you very much. So, and now we come to the actual signature. Uh, I think the, the, the folders are uh, in front of you. Who wants to start? Yeah. I have these starts, yeah. So oh, thank you very much. Uh, and now we have uh, 50 minutes, a little more than 50 minutes even time for Q&A. So go ahead and fire your questions. So if you want to put up your hands, if you have a question, say your name and your publication before your question. Thanks. I think we might be. <laughs> Come on, that must be a good opportunity. Sorry, please, ta uh, please take the microphone. Uh, sorry, this question is about Portuguese market. I will try to, to make it in English, but also make it in Portuguese for our uh, minister and for uh, the commissioner, Carlos Moedas. Um, it's regarding the, um, the European budget. Um, you got to coloca a question in Portuguese. 
para o Dr. Carlos Moedas. Um, Portugal considera inaceitável a proposta finlandesa relativamente a este orçamento. Um, assim sendo o corte de 6% na política de coesão proposto pela Comissão apresenta-se como um mal menor. Esta é uma das questões. Uh, o que é que, para, para o Ministro, o que é que Portugal considera uma, uma proposta aceitável neste, nesta medida? São estas as minhas duas questões. Eu posso começar só para enquadrar a, a resposta ao, ao Sr. Ministro. Em primeiro lugar, aquilo que, que estamos é com uma proposta da Comissão que, que está a ser negociada e que vai ser negociada pelos países e, portanto, eu uh, dou, dou o maior apoio pessoal a que os países tentem melhorar essa proposta. Essa é a função dos países. Agora, há uma coisa que nós temos que ser claros, não é? Uh, o budget anual da União Europeia são mais ou menos 150 mil milhões de euros. Números redondos. Quando um país como o Reino Unido sai, são menos 12 mil milhões por ano. Ou seja, só retirar esse país faz um buraco naquilo que é um orçamento que é da ordem dos 150, de 12 mil milhões. Ou seja, ao retirar isso, esse buraco tem que ser preenchido de duas maneiras, com maior eficiência da própria Comissão Europeia e tentar gastar melhor e investir melhor, e isso é feito, mas também tem que haver maior esforço dos países. E, portanto, os países vão ter que, efetivamente, meter mais. E essa é a discussão. E o problema na Europa é que aqueles que põem não querem pôr mais e aqueles que recebem não querem receber menos. E, portanto, isto é uma fórmula matemática impossível de gerir. Uh, mas uma coisa é certa, eu acho que temos que caminhar para uma Europa com um orçamento superior e, portanto, essa tem sido a nossa luta e a minha luta, em particular, é um orçamento cada vez maior na área da ciência e da inovação que são os únicos motores que nós temos para a criação de emprego na Europa. E daí eu ter deixado em cima da mesa essa proposta de 100 mil milhões para o programa Horizonte Europa, que será o próximo programa de ciência. Mas eu acho que estamos alinhados nessa, nessa luta. Bom, como o Sr. Comissário explicou, a proposta da Comissão envolve um crescimento daquilo que são as contribuições dos Estados que permanecem na União. Essa proposta é resistida por alguns daqueles que são os maiores contribuintes. Os países que são recipientes líquidos do orçamento da União entendem que não deve ser essa a aproximação. Portugal, em particular, já se manifestou não apenas no sentido de que está disponível para aumentar a sua contribuição para a União, como chama a atenção para a circunstância de que, apesar de termos menos, menos um país que é um grande contribuinte que está envolvido, Apesar de tudo, a União tem, além das políticas atuais, que fazer face a novas necessidades que estão claramente identificadas como sendo prioridades da União. Estamos a falar de coisas como as alterações climáticas, como a inovação e a ciência, estamos a falar de coisas como as migrações e a defesa das nossas fronteiras. Estas questões, obviamente, que surgem, se necessitam de novas fontes de financiamento e é nesse contexto que estamos a ter a discussão. Portanto, aquilo que sabemos necessariamente, é que aquilo que é a contribuição dos Estados em geral vai aumentar. Em que medida e como é que depois vamos distribuir, é isso que neste momento está a ser discutido ao nível do Conselho. Como sabem, o Sr. Primeiro-Ministro está a participar neste momento numa cimeira dos países amigos da coesão, na eh, tentativa de eh, alinhar as posições para esta discussão se poder fazer da forma mais profícua possível. E é isso que tenho neste momento para dizer. So, further questions, please. The lady over here. Thanks. Uh, here's the paper dossier from China. Uh, I have a question about the Portuguese economy and digitalization. And we see that in recent years, Portugal's state, Portugal's government, is supporting the technology startups and especially the internet industry in the Portugal have launched many programs and is also holding the web summit. So why does Portugal choose this to focus on this specific uh, issue? And uh, what do you think are Portugal's advantages and challenges in terms of it compared with other European Union countries? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your question. 
I think uh, we all acknowledge that the pace of change in respect of technology is having a tremendous impact on societies and economies. And we understand that uh, the source of growth in the future will come by better using the resources we have available. Technology and digitalization will help enhance productivity, which is why we believe that no country can remain uh, out, uh, out of this challenge of digital transformation. We are aware that we have some specific uh, assets which we can use to our advantage. The one which is more significant, which uh, every investor which I have been talking to are very clear about their preferences, is the quality of our people. Our people not only benefit from an education system which has received a very large investment in the last decades, and we have some of the best European uh, uh, schools in terms of engineering, sciences, technology, but also, uh, this is very well mentioned, the Portuguese workers in these areas uh, are uh, extremely committed to the results, are results-oriented rather than process-driven, which is precisely what is required when you're trying to push the edge in terms of the technology which is being developed. So that's one. The other thing, of course, is that uh, if, you, if you look at the challenges we are facing, I've talked about that. One is capital available to support the investment that you need to do in respect of digital transformation, which is why we were working so hard to make sure that we make the best use of resources from government and private sector in the European Union to support this change. And the second is to make sure that every person in the country is not left behind, no person in the country is left behind. So that they have the skills which enables them to take advantage of the opportunities that are being created by the digital transition, and at the same time, the older gener generations can uh, make the most of the opportunities which this benefit. If we want to increase the market, develop the market, make a better use of uh, uh, technology in government, then we must make sure that every citizen, every worker, every company is truly able to take advantage of this. And that's the effort we are making in the skills, in the development of the skills of the population, of the workforce, and the preparation of uh, companies and government to embrace this new year. And I think that we are on the right path, and I think that the simple fact that so many major companies are looking into the country and installing uh, development centers in the area to take advantage of uh, the location, the security and the like, uh, shows that, that we are in a good path. Gentleman over here, please. I think we're actually just up for one more question. I think you answered his question already, so. Okay. We have time for one more. Yeah, just stay in the back. Hi, uh, Stefani Arcudi, Radio Car Italy. Um, for the commissioner, I was um, wondering uh, what do you think it's uh, still missing in the framework of the EU for um, support um, technology or um, industry, um, as you were saying? I think that uh, we have identified in the ecosystem from early on, first, uh, the point that is a European point and the minister was also reinforcing, which is our dependency as Europeans from bank debt. You know, the big difference in between the US and the EU, if you look at it, is that in the US you have much more diversified sources of finance. So you have 30% bank debt and the rest comes from uh, venture capital, business angels and other sources of equity. In Europe is the other way around. I mean the financial crisis actually created as a dependency on bank debt and public financing. I mean you look at the numbers for venture capital and you go from before the crisis public venture capital was 14% in Europe of the whole cake, and after the crisis was 35%. And that's why we were really focusing these uh, fund of funds of Europe, this venture EU, as attracting more capital that is private. We need more private capital. And so that's one of the things that we have to, to fight. 
The second, I think, is education. And uh, this is a, a bigger challenge because it involves a change in the way that we look at education uh, from a very early primary school to the secondary school to universities where we invest more in basically teaching everyone the core of the disciplines and then the intersections of the disciplines because you know today that really innovation comes from those intersections in between the disciplines so that's a point also that i see as a difference when you go to university hours today with someone from carnegie mellon i mean you go to carnegie mellon and you can choose what you want to do you can do music and physics or arts and medicine you know, and so our system in Europe has to adapt to those changes. This is something that I really believe and I will be keep fighting even after I'm a commissioner. And I think that you cannot compare the US and the EU. You cannot imagine a Silicon Valley of Europe. I mean, that's the wrong question. I think uh, the Silicon Valley of Europe is a network of uh, Silicon Valleys like uh, Lisbon, Berlin, Madrid, Amsterdam, all together, where you have the major assets for innovation, which is diversity, and Europe has to play it as a positive and not a negative. I mean, we are much more diverse than the US. We speak more languages. Uh, we have uh, cultures that are totally different from the south to the north, to the east to the west. And that's, that's an amazing source of hope for our future as Europe. So uh, I think that if you look at the next wave of innovation, that will be more about uh, AI, um, quantum uh, mechanics and quantum technologies, I think that Europe is very well positioned on that diversity, on the science. We have the best scientists. So we have two point, I mean, today we have two million scientists in Europe, which is much more than other parts of the world. Uh, if you look at the top 1% papers and scientific articles, we are now surpassing the US. And so that's all good news for Europe. But we have to work better together and look at the things that we thought are disadvantages as advantages. And so that's part of what I've been trying to do over, over these years. Okay, thanks everyone. I think we have just a minute for pictures um, after that. Yeah, for, the, for the family photo, maybe, if you want to. <laughs> yeah, visual people, aren't we? Two videos are good to be played. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. 